So guys, welcome back to the channel. Now look, we always hear that running slow is the thing that we have to do. We've always got to slow down. Too much faster running is going to make us injured. It just isn't good for us. But today we're talking about why running slow isn't always the answer. Let's get into it. Hi hey guys, well I came across an article on lifehacker.com and that article, you won't be surprised to hear, is titled Why Running Slow Isn't Always the Answer. And look, I don't know if you are a beginner runner, maybe you've been running for a while, if you have been running for a while, you've probably had enough time to figure out what you like, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And if you follow any running news, then you've definitely heard of 80-20 running. And it doesn't always have to be 80% running easy and 20% running hard, but I think that what is agreed upon is that we have to run more easy miles than we do fast miles, right? So I actually thought the title of this article was a little sensational. I mean, it's really not. Because if we have been running for a while, then we know that running easy all the time is not the answer. And actually, the article puts it in a way that I hadn't actually thought about. And this running easy or telling runners to slow down is more geared towards newer runners. And when we are newer runners or when we were newer runners, or if you are a newer runner, it can be very easy to go out and just want to hammer it. Because that's probably been your experience with running. Maybe you haven't run since you were a child. And when you run as a child, you run all out all the time. And we have this, this notion that we have to run fast in order to get any benefit from our runs, right? And that's where this advice to new runners comes from. We want them to slow down so their running can be more sustainable. I think ultimately we want new runners or we want us as runners to run for a long time, like over the course of our lives. And if you run too fast, then it's really not sustainable. If every time you go out and you're totally gassed and you're out of breath and your lungs are burning and your legs ache and you have to put your feet up at the end of every run, right? That's not really inviting. It doesn't make us want to go out and just punish ourselves day in and day out or at least that's probably going to be the case for new runners like I can get how a new runner might feel good the first time they get out and they run hard but if they do that day in and day out then yes it's going to be tiring probably going to hurt themselves and that's what we want to keep away from so while the article is a little sensational and that's how they got me to click on it with running easy not being the answer or not always being the answer. When you read a little bit into the article, you do quickly find out that running easy is what we should be doing most of the time. Oh, and I will place a link to this article in the show notes below in case you want to read through it yourself. But we want to run easy because that is how we're able to stack volume. And if we do something more, we're able to get better at it. So if we run more miles, more kilometers, we're going to get better at running. So really what I found out after reading this article is that it's really just a pitch to teach you how to do some faster runs. So we're going to be talking about doing faster runs. So here's the first question that I want to hear from you. I know there are a lot of people that have been running for a long time and you probably like doing your speed work. So I guess I want to hear from you runners that have been running for a long time. If you could pick one interval length and only run that for the rest of your running career, what would it be? 200s, 400s, 800s, 1200s, the mile? Let me know. Oh, and I also want to know what rest period you like in between those intervals. Like, do you do one to one? So if you do 400, do you take a 400 break? If you run 800s, do you take an 800 break? I haven't actually thought about it up until now, but if I think of the workouts that I have programmed on this this watch. I think 400s get a 400 meter break. 800s get a 400 meter break. I think on my watch I've got kilometer repeats with a 400 meter break. And then when I go up to mile repeats, I think I, I may have 800 meter breaks in between just so I can get enough recovery. But I find that when I'm doing these intervals and I do take a 400 meter break, it usually takes me around two minutes or two minutes and five seconds to cover that distance. And I've also found that that two minute recovery is, is quite enough for me to recover and feel like I'm ready to hit it hard again, at least in the beginning of the workout. Okay, the article also says that the reason for doing some speed workout is so we can learn how to run and not just shuffle. And coming from a shuffle runner, I'm a little offended because I think I shuffle at all paces. But I know what they're saying. In fact, they also give a pretty extreme example of runners that are running at about a 13 to 15 minute mile or about four miles an hour. The article says that if they're always running at that pace, they're doing a great job at keeping that effort low, but they may need to run a little faster in order to actually run. I mean, like run with springing steps. And that can be fun. Now, the article also points out that shuffling is not bad. In fact, they say it's an ultra runner's favorite pace, like it's their bread and butter, it's their go to. It's what they need to resort to when you're up for hours on the course. And the article reminds us that running is a skill and in order to get better at a skill, we need to practice it. So if you want to run faster, you're going to have to practice running faster. Gosh, I really talked around that, didn't I? Anyway, these are the ways that you can learn how to run a little bit of faster. And the article starts off with strides. And a stride basically is a very short increment of a run where we slowly build up to a fast pace and then we slowly slow down and then we fully recover and then we do it again. Like with strides, you may not be running more than your fastest pace for more than 10 seconds before you're already starting to slow down. And the reason these are so beneficial is because they are teaching us to turn over our legs, to actually run, and to practice running fast without getting tired from running fast. 
Now I'm talking to new runners here, but you may have heard of intervals, and intervals are where we are running faster for set distances of time. But they can be a bit overwhelming if you're just starting off. So the article gives us several good options, and I think this is a really ideal way to start if you're a beginner, but they're 30, 20, 10s, and I hadn't heard this until I saw this in the article. But ultimately the 30, 20, 10 interval setup is where you are jogging very slowly for 30 seconds, then you're running at a medium pace for 20 seconds, and then you're running hard for 10 seconds, and then that repeats. And that whole block is one minute, and you can just repeat that as many times as necessary. And by doing that, you're going to be teaching your body to run efficiently at different paces. I actually really like the sound of this, and I think I may incorporate those into some of my easier runs. Like instead of doing strides, I can move into some 30-20-10s. The article then moves on to 30-30s, where we've got 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And I tend to do these, and if you follow me on Strava, you'll see those are the days that I call them that I did strides. But really they're not. They're a little longer than strides. But it's an equal amount of work and rest, and you are 30 seconds running hard, and then you're recovering for 30 seconds. And it's a funny thing. When I'm doing these 30-30 intervals, I find that it's actually quite difficult in the beginning. Like it's difficult to pick up my feet and get them turning over. But I found that those 30-30 intervals tend to get quicker as I move through them. And that's just because I'm warming up. I'm getting used to running fast. Now by the end, depending on what I do, eight or 10, I'm definitely finding it difficult to recover in those 30 seconds. That's really not long enough to fully let my heart rate come down, but I can usually hold on to the same pace. And when I do those, I'm probably running at about 5K pace. And that's gonna be different for everyone. So don't worry about what speed that is. And then the article talks about short VO2 max intervals, and that is where we are running even faster than 5k pace. Not an all-out sprint, but very close to it. And those can pretty much be any distance you choose, much like any intervals. I mean, we do have the choice to choose whatever interval length we want. But the article does point out that traditionally VO2 max intervals are between three and five minutes with equal amounts of rest. But remember, you do what works for you. The next reason why running slow isn't always the answer is because running fast is fun. At least it's more fun than running slow. And I think that's why a lot of runners, they really struggle to really run at a low heart rate because it can be incredibly boring. Like we want to run, we don't want to walk. And sometimes if you're not used to it, running at any pace can put your heart rate a little higher than you want. So by injecting some speed into our workouts, our runs, we're going to make them just a little more fun. And when it comes down to it, that is ultimately why we're doing this. Then the article moves on to fart legs and fart legs are generally just unmeasured periods periods of running fast and they don't always stay the same. So I always think of running between lampposts or street signs and maybe I'm going to run between three, maybe I'm going to run between five, but by mixing it up it's going to keep it fun. And I say fun, it's it's really not fun for me. I do like the structure of intervals, but my wife loves fartleks and when we go out and we run together and we're going to do intervals, we will always do fartlek intervals. I never know how long I'm going to be running fast for. Sometimes it's a short amount, which I like, sometimes it's longer which I like less. But look, even though easy running isn't always the answer, it is mostly always the answer. But we do need to add a few more ingredients in order to make us the best runners we can be. If you're just getting started running, it's probably a good idea to build that consistency before you start injecting too much speed work. Remember the terrible twos, the best ways to get injured too much, too soon, too fast. If we start injecting too much speed, we may hurt ourselves. And then there's always hill repeats. By running fast uphill, we're not gonna be running as fast as we will on flat ground, but we're gonna be reducing that impact. And if you live in a hilly area or you're going to be running a hilly race definitely pays to train in the hills. And I can say that from experience because when I go and I run Boston, I generally don't train in the hills before going there. Yes, I'll do a couple of workouts over a bridge near where I live, but it's really not hill work and I struggle every year. So guys, now it's your turn. I think we're going to stick with that same question in the comments. I want to know if you had to stick to one interval length for the rest of your running life, what would it be? And if you have made it to this point in the video, I want you to let me know by dropping the copyright sign in the comments. And that is because last week I went through a whole thing with a BAA where I got a copyright strike on my YouTube video of the Boston Marathon and then that copyright strike was removed so in recognition of that drop the copyright symbol in the comments and with that it's Matt B this has been a video on why running easy isn't always the answer be kind be happy run well I'll see you in a couple of days